Hey guys, Dr. Sean here. We're gonna dip into our mail bag today. We're digging through. The girls gave me stuff hot off the pimp, the printer. So we're looking here now. Takayasu's arteritis. This is the question we get. It says, hey doc, uh, I have got a call. Uh, Takasaku arteritis. Um, mine pretty much is severe vasculitis. This year so far, I've received four surgeries, one below the knee amputation because of my illness. I know better nutrition is warranted. Currently, I'm eating a high protein diet for wound healing. What else can I do? Okay, great question. So let's go here. First things first, the condition itself, arterial inflammation, arteries swelling, inflamed. They're not sure why. Etiology for this is unknown, which means we don't know what causes it. It just happens. It tends to happen in women more than men, uh, childbearing years more than other things. So we, we look at this and we say, okay, if this is the case, how do I get at something where we don't know what causes it, but we know the symptoms? So we go back and we look at this and say, okay, arteries, arteries, what do they have? What's special about an artery? Oh, it's muscle. Lots and lots of muscle. And muscle gets tight. So you start thinking to yourself, if the muscle gets tight, it constricts. When it constricts and it gets tight, it gets brittle. Brittle things tear. Ah, now we have a commonality. Now we know, okay, the muscle gets inflamed. That's the key word here, right? Inflammation. It gets inflamed. So you start looking for triggers that cause arterial inflammation. Number one thing, they asked me about what would I do for nutrition, okay? You got to balance it. You got to balance that diet. Now, how do you know what to do? It's a great idea to increase your protein for wound healing, but protein can be inflammatory if it's not digested. So the first thing I would do if I were seeing you as a patient, I would say, okay, let's run an integrated urinalysis panel. First and foremost, run the IUP because it's going to tell me, are you digesting your fat? Are you digesting your protein? Are you using your carbohydrates? Are you getting rid of the waste once you digest it? Is your body getting rid of this stuff? Because if you're not getting rid of it, now it's a poison and it inflames you even more. See, even a perfect diet can be a problem, guys. We got to figure out, can my body use it? A good friend of mine and a physician that I work with all the time always says, to see is to know, to not see is to guess. Stop guessing. That's what everyone else is doing. Run the IUP, see where you're at. Now, the next thing I would do, once I know what food groups the body can utilize and cannot, I would support digestion. Make sure you're breaking down the food you're putting in. And the piece after that, and here's the secret, it's the secret for weight loss, it's the secret for diabetes, it's the secret for heart disease, it's the secret for stroke, it's the secret for cancers. Okay guys, this is the secret. You've got to control your insulin levels. You cannot allow the hormone insulin to spike and stay spiked. If it does, it causes inflammation. If it does, it forces the body to store huge amounts of sugar in its cells. If blood sugar being too high is considered poisonous to us, then why wouldn't blood sugar, that sugar being stored in the cells in huge amounts, also be poisonous to us? It is. You got to regulate it. So when we eat, a lot of times our insulin levels go up. If we eat too much over a long period of time and the body can't respond, you become insulin resistant, which means all of a sudden the body can't lower the sugars. So what's it do? It produces more insulin which causes more inflammation. The more inflammation says make more insulin and it, it just keeps going. You can never catch up. So there's a way to do this. It requires different dieting. It may require some intermittent fasting or something of that nature. The key to it is run the IUP. If you do that, you'll get your inflammation under control. You may notice that all these things you've had going on start to settle back. It'd be very interesting to know in this individual what's your blood sugar and what's your A1C. I'm almost betting they're probably a little out of the normal range. So food for thought. I hope that helps you. I'm Dr. Sean, the Robin Hood Healthcare.